Hey everybody, it's uh, Chris from Comic Tropes. Just uh, have a day off. I've been drawing. I've been um, practicing one point perspective and I've uh, drawn a um, pretty rough but accurate version of like um, Bourbon Street in New Orleans. It's a place that I lived for uh, four years for college and I love it. And I was just in the mood to draw architecture as well as try to practice some inking techniques on reflections. So I drew this like with the intention of inking it as a wet street. Now whether I'm going to be able to like actually bring this to fruition, I don't know. But it's I think it's a a, a good project worth uh, worth doing. So let's see. Oh, and some people jumped into the chat. I didn't necessarily know because I haven't announced this or anything. But um. Let's see, there's a bunch of folks here. So hello to uh, Compared, Roman, Pterodactyl, Iron Shell, Atomicus, Jeff Whitmore, and the Beowulf, and Brett. Let's see. Um, your first video so many years ago was New Orleans. Um, oh, I mean, I don't know if I did that. On, did I put that on this channel? I did... Um, put out a video once when my friend uh, got married and we had a traditional like Bourbon Street um, wedding. I didn't, I didn't realize that I put that on this channel. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, hello Terry and hello Andrew. Hello Sigmigs. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, a, that was really cool. So um, my friend uh, Chris Lee is a uh, cool guy that I met in New Orleans and he uh, actually while I was with him uh, still in college he met um, Shauna Esol the uh, bassist from White Zombie and uh, when they had their wedding um, Chrissy and I got to uh, be a part of that like uh, we did a traditional um, New Orleans big band wedding down um, Bourbon Street at night. There was a, a traditional jazz band, like with, you know, the trumpeters and, and drummers and stuff leading us down. Uh, the bride and groom had like white parasols and we all had um, handkerchiefs and we're like, you know, waving it around. It was it was great. Um, hello, Watchful and Harmonious. Hello, Alisemp. Hello, Roland. Um, so that's awesome. Let's see. So anyway, um, I'll get into uh, inking, I guess, and then uh, we'll see where things go from here. But if you have questions, feel free to um, shout them out in the um, in the chat here, and I'll do my best to uh, uh, look up every once in a while and try to answer questions. Uh, keeps uh, keeps life interesting. Let's see. I tried my hand in drawing New Orleans architecture, still working on it though. Yeah, well, and, and that's what's so fun about it is it's just so old fashioned, you know? It's, um, yeah, there, there's no other city quite like New Orleans in my my opinion. Uh, I love how how it looks and how it feels. It's, it's a great, great city. I, I, I'm a big fan. <laughs> And I miss it sometimes. I don't know if I'd uh, enjoy the weather as much now that I'm a little older and I don't really enjoy the humidity and stuff. But uh, at the time, when I was in my early 20s, I loved it. Hello, Diego. Um, where should I start with Criminal? I would recommend uh, Coward. Uh, that was the first five issues. So um, that's been collected into a trade paperback. Um, so that's that's what I'd recommend. You ever think about playing Jackbox games on stream? Um, no, I don't quite know what that is, uh, Sigmigs. Uh, sorry, it's terrible. As a Portland man, I think the humidity would destroy me in NOLA. Yeah, Portland, that's pretty close to, to me here in um, the Seattle area. Um, I know what you mean. As I've gotten older, I've really come to um, enjoy the, uh, the, the more mild weather that we have uh, out here. But I, I do miss a lot about New Orleans. Um, the food, for one thing. I definitely discovered a lot of food that I came to really love there. 
Jambalaya, Etouffee, Po' Boys. It's great. It's really amazing. Humidity in the south gets some takes some getting used to. Yeah, yeah, you get used to it. It's colder and windy in New Orleans now. Sure. Yeah, I remember. I remember um, that I had to. Uh, leave my plumbing going like leave a trickle of water uh during this time of year because the pipes are rarely insulated in new orleans so um you'd uh, have to uh yeah just sort of leave that going so um i'm going to talk a little bit about a topic and then i will try to um look up and answer questions later but but i'm not going to be able to i'm not i'm going to focus on drawing for a minute and I'm gonna like tell a, a story, talk about something about YouTube for a minute. So be patient, and I'll look up in a while with questions. You can talk amongst each other, but I'll I'll, I'll catch uh, your questions in a little bit. So um, I've been I always follow my channel's analytics pretty pretty carefully, and uh, it's not doing very well right now overall. Um, well, maybe that's an exaggeration. It's it's doing well, but it isn't doing what it used to do um, I th there's a thing that's gone on right lately there was an act passed called uh, well the abbreviated form is COPA the Child Online Privacy Protection Act and uh, the goal as they've stated is to um, make sure that companies including YouTube but companies online are not gathering the data of children, gathering like their viewing habits and stuff for advertisers. Um, because, you know, you're not really supposed to advertise directly to children. You can advertise, I don't know, there, there's very weird rules, obviously. There are toy commercials and stuff, but there's always been like some sort of um, rules in place. And if I'm going to go conspiracy theorist, I believe that some of what uh, is in the actual language of uh, COPA is honestly designed to hurt YouTube. Um, and, and I believe that it's come from lobbyists from traditional uh, television cable and stuff like that. I, I know that sounds a little crazy, but bear with me because, you know, they, they've been losing their audience every year more and more to uh, YouTube. YouTube is way more popular with a younger audience than traditional TV. It's not like TV is going away. It's just that like people like streaming on demand. That's that's what they like. And YouTube gives you so many channels like mine and others that, that are very niche. They're, they're, they're specifically aimed at, at specific topics. Anyway, so COPA's got this language. And, and by the way, like protecting the harvesting of information of, of, of like, you know, um, young children is, is, is an admirable goal. But I believe that the actual bill over overreaches and in turn YouTube has overreached. Um, what I mean by that is that YouTube got hit by the federal government over this with like a, um, well, I think they settled, but they, they paid something along the lines of 170 million plus over 170 million dollars in fines um, because um, you know like advertisers were like you know targeting children based on the analytics that YouTube was providing them with uh, all well and good you know uh, if you look out there there are channels that are specifically aimed at kids and some of it's a little weird by the way but like uh, you know like uh, little animated songs sometimes and then sometimes like you know toy reviews like the toy reviews by kids specifically and uh it's it's kind of weird stuff but the the most important part of what i'm getting at is that youtube has enacted a bunch of new um, measures that actually don't go into effect until january uh essentially they're they're telling youtube content creators like myself or any other channel that you watch that they have to declare whether their content is specifically aimed at children not appropriate for children but aimed at children and then on top of that they are sending out 
some sort of like intelligent like web crawler across their platform to see if anybody is um as, as, per youtube's uh, reckoning aiming their content at children now of course from youtube's perspective this is done so that they can avoid paying big fees you know but i think that honestly they have panicked and um even though the changes to the um content guidelines don't truly go into effect until next month i believe that youtube has changed their algorithm and that's what like you know follows you when you're logged in and says okay you watch this i think you might like watching something similar and because you've always got recommendations in your feed anytime you log in you also have things like um, your subscription feed well YouTube is saying, first of all, that if you either declare that you are aimed at kids or you are found to make content that is primarily aimed at kids, you're going to lose a lot of features. First of all, you won't get recommended to anyone anymore. Second, uh, people that subscribe to you will probably not even be alerted that, that you have new content. They have to go to your page to find it. Uh, on top of that, um, they're going to disable some features like comments under videos. And, and I'm not against any of these ideas yet, but I am in terms of how they're going about finding these people because they, they define everything very loosely so that they have a lot of flexibility because obviously there's plenty of toy review channels that are aimed more at adult collectors, right? You know, like a, a channel about, say, G.I. Joe or something. Probably not at this point aimed at, like, you know, kids under 13. It's aimed at uh, kids that are, like, Gen X or something. I mean, other people may find it interesting. But it, it's, it's aimed at, a, like, a nostalgia type of audience. The issue is... I think YouTube is ahead of this, getting nervous about stuff. Um... They're going to say that, like, you know, oh, you review comics? Well, superheroes are for kids. Star Wars is for kids. They're going to say all these things, like, you know, could be for kids. Yeah, well, just because it could be for kids and, and, and could even be appropriate for kids doesn't mean that it's aimed at kids. You know? You can put your kid in front of, like, you know, a television show that's on at, like, 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And it's probably going to be appropriate for them. doesn't mean that it's aimed at them. Uh, that's just a, a, a random example, you know, like, here's the thing, like, is my channel going to be targeted with this? Well, I believe that actually it already has. Before these changes go into place, and I've already declared my content is not aimed at kids, but I've, because I, 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 it isn't, in my opinion, I've never considered any of this as being aimed at kids. I'm trying to talk about, like, you know, themes and analyze like artists artistic techniques yeah kids might like the comics but my specific look at them is probably going to put a kid to sleep i i, I would say you know it, it it's not it's not something that that's built to interest them and then um what i'm seeing i'm i'm i'm, act, I'm seeing some effects so let me get to that I don't want to like put out like actual like hard numbers necessarily, but you could look at any of my recent videos. And by recent, I mean like anything basically in the last two months. And you're going to see view counts far below where they used to be. I think I could usually count, for instance, on a, any average video getting at least 10,000 videos in its first 24 hours. Over the last, like, year, that that's what I've built up to. Like, I could, like, e even if it's, like, not that interesting, there's enough of my subscribers that will, like, find that, plus a few recommends. I could count on 10,000. Now, if I had a video that was doing really well, you know, maybe that's 30,000 or something in that first 24 hours. That that, that first 24 hours is um pretty important. What I'm seeing now is two or 3,000 in that first 24 hours. Um, 
And you could argue, like, oh, some of your videos have been about, like, horror comics and crime comics lately. That's not exactly as mainstream as when I talk about, you know, like, um, uh, I don't know, uh, any popular artist or, or popular character. You know, I'm not talking about the Clone Saga. I'm not talking about Greg Land or something like that. Rob Liefeld. That stuff does always get more views. But he, what I, I would still expect a video on Criminal to get a lot more traction than what it is getting um you know obviously there's a small technical error in my latest video where something's out of focus but i think that the content is generally still there i don't i don't think it should bomb uh i think that ed brubaker and sean phillips are you know pretty pretty big names in comics i really do um and I, I would think that there'd be plenty of people that, that should be um, interested in taking a look at their work. But I think my video only has like, you know, we're, we're almost at like, um, we're well over 24 hours and it only has about like 3,000 views. I'm not, and I'm not whining about any of that. I'm, I'm using it as a statistic to, to point out that my videos very very recently are just not getting any traction they're they're like and so what right i mean like do have i ever like said that i needed a million subscribers no that's not my personal goal i want to like build my channel as much as possible but i don't have some like you know it, it is about comics as compared to you know like um uh, being like a movie review show or something more mainstream beauty beauty tips you know like there are things that are way more mainstream than what I talk about. But I do think that there's a bigger audience for it um, than what I'm currently getting. I mean, I saw my numbers over this last year in terms of subscribers grow and grow and grow. You know, like I was really proud of that because I, no matter what you think of my content, all I can tell you is I do put a lot of hard work into it. I spend a lot of hours making my videos. And, uh, you know, to, to sort of see my subscriber count just stall out was like, I was like, okay, well, I guess maybe I've uh, reached close to the, the, the top of like what my audience is going to be. I, I don't know, maybe. Um, you know, I, I, I think that there's way more of an audience out there. But then I was like, well, certainly there's no reason for my, um, my, my existing videos, if I haven't significantly changed what I'm delivering for content, no, no, no reason for it to just sort of bomb r repeatedly. And like maybe one video doesn't do well, fine. Maybe two videos don't do well, fine. But it's definitely a pattern. Um, I'm definitely seeing that the videos I'm creating are, are, are getting at best, at best, about 25% of the audience they used to. Now that reflects 100% monetarily as well, because I do make money on YouTube, I, and and I mean I've worked hard to get to the point where I can make some money on YouTube, um, and and I don't have any plans yet in like changing what I'm doing. Uh, but you know if you're putting in a certain amount of work, you know like 20 hours or so, I, I, I at least is what I put in for an episode each week. And to see that go from, like, you know, a certain number to, like, a quarter of as much income all of a sudden, every month, well, just just over the last two months, but, like, you know, that, that, that seems to be, two points isn't a trend, it's just a line. But if that continues next month, that's a lot of money out of my pocket all of a sudden that I was sort of, like, you know, using. I mean, I just invested in a house, for instance. Um, I just had to get uh, a DSLR camera. Um, now, that actually was uh, donated to me by my fiancé, but at the same time, like, it was still an expenditure on, on, on each of our parts. Um, I'm going to have to get a new computer at some point soon because it's slowing down. I've had it for, for geez, almost three years I've been doing the show. That's the kind of thing you, you need to replace. And I've always considered, like, you know, the comics and the hardware and the software and things like that to be an expenditure from the show. And when I started doing the show, I was doing that at a loss because I wanted to build something. And now, you know, it, it's barely covering 
what I spend. So now all of a sudden, like, you know, after several years, I'm, I'm like falling back. You know, I want to progress. I don't want to regress. Um, yeah, I just saw a comment there. Uh, what was that? Uh, someone, I think, just said my last few videos. Okay, yeah, Diego says, I haven't been notified about your latest video uploads, though. Exactly. Even if you don't hit the... If you hit the bell icon, you're supposed to be notified. But even if you don't and you've subscribed, that's supposed to come up in your recommended feed. Even supposing that some of you out there haven't hit subscribe, sometimes if you've watched a bunch of my videos, they'll still come up as recommended content. That's definitely not happening. That's definitely not happening. Because I'm only getting a portion of my subscribers hitting it. And I can even tell by the comments that a lot of the... the, the, the um, people watching are existing uh, subscribers as compared to brand new people going like, oh, what a neat discovery. You know, like I'm not seeing a comment like that. So it's a concern. It's a big concern. What are my options? Well, right now I'm going to be patient and wait. Let's see if 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 enough people are, are ta saying, hey, YouTube, I'm not seeing the content that I want to see. If enough creators are speaking up going, hey, YouTube, what have you done here? You've like destroyed my income with these decisions. And maybe YouTube will continue to adjust their algorithm and I'll get back to where I was. That's my hope, right? That's my hope is, is get back to where I was. If not, how do I, how do I continue with the channel? Well... Obviously, I could keep doing what I am doing, and if that's not getting views, that is a lot of hours to be spending on something that isn't really justifying that. Like, I, even, even forgetting the money part of it, I at least sacrifice my time for this, right? And that includes decisions that are not fun. Um, you know, I, I don't play video games much anymore. I don't get to go out to the movies as often. I sometimes have to decline, quite quite often decline, a friend's invitation to hang out. I say, you know what, I'd like to, I've got some work to do. So I am making that sacrifice at least, um, it, to, to continue um, making the show is, is at least, for, forget the money, it's, it's definitely taking my time. Um, so, do I keep making the same show? Even if it, like, you know, isn't paying me or, or anything like that? Like, do I continue to give up my time and money to continue making comic tropes? Well, that's not a, a super easy thing to just say, you know? I, I, at the beginning, when you're starting a channel... You have to understand you're, you're starting from nothing, you know, and you have to build. And, and I'm, I was willing to make that sacrifice and that investment because I believed it would pay off. And it did. And now it is not. That's regressing. And, and I don't want to stop doing this. This is what I love doing. I love talking about comics. I love making this. It, so I want to do my channel. But it's hard to justify if I'm not earning something from it because I spend a lot of time. I should do a weekly podcast. I've done that stuff. This stuff is depressing me, dog. I won't talk too much more about this, Sigmix, but this is important. This is really important. Like, And this is sort of all bonus content. Nobody has to listen to me. I'm talking about some very real things that are going on in YouTube for not just me, for every content creator. Um, certainly... If you watch this show, you probably watch some other content that's, you know, like pop culture based. Is YouTube going to define that as being for kids? I don't know. Um, my other option is to turn my show into something where, you know, I do like top 10 Batman stories. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like a, a more clickbaity style of, of content. Uh, 
Marvel's at it again with another few mistakes. You know, that kind of stuff. Like, I could make content like that that may engage a, a wider audience. Um, just like, you know, but I don't want to just sort of recap a comic book. I don't, I don't want to, I, I, that doesn't interest me personally. I'm not saying it's bad content. I'm saying that the kind of show I want to make is analyzing comics on a deeper level. Um, finding, you know, the techniques that, that work and, and don't work because I think it's interesting to people. I think it's interesting to a lot of people. But um, if, I, I, I couldn't do that show, to be honest. I couldn't do a show like that. I, um, but that's like, you know, one of my options. Is, is sort of create more clickbait, I'll call it, um, type of titles. I don't want to do that. I want to keep doing the show that I'm doing. I believe that there's actually a good audience for it. I don't just believe it. They're, they're, the, the fact is there. I feel like you should do comic book news, but still keep your format. Yeah, but comic book news is is something that's fun, but it's also not evergreen. As in, like, what I do now, it, m most of these episodes, if not all, are something that would be interesting to people, like, you know, two, three years down the road, uh, just as much as if they found it brand new. Um, I want to find, like, you know, the ongoing um, types of techniques and stuff used in, cos in comics. Well, I'm, I'm glad that most of you seem to say that you... Um, enjoy my show. I appreciate that. I sincerely do. It means everything to me. Um, I don't know what the solution is. Um, okay. Here, th thank you. First of all, Andrew Jefferson, that that's awesome to see a super chat. That's so cool. It sucks that it's been rough lately. Love your work though. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, that's sincerely appreciated. You know, I guess the other thing is, you know, trying to, um, create content that exists behind some sort of a paywall, right? You know, I mean, I could always all of a sudden just have all my videos unlisted and the only way to see them is by like, you know, being a Patreon subscriber, for instance. I'm not doing that. Just for the record, I'm not. Um, that doesn't interest me. Um, I don't believe that everybody can afford to pay for this content. And I, I'm grateful for those that... that that already do support me on things like Patreon or, or a super chat like this means a lot to me. It really does help. It helps make it worthwhile. But I don't expect like everyone in my audience or even the most of the audience to be in that kind of a position. I, I knew that going in that that wasn't what YouTube the platform was. It isn't how to describe it. It isn't a platform where you just pay to see anything you, you want or yeah. Uh, so it's it's tough. It's it it's tough to to figure out exactly what the um, solution will be. Right now, my plan is to be patient. I've got a lot of ideas for content. I always think pretty far ahead for comic tropes, and so I'll be doing this for for definitely several months to to come. No matter what, no matter what, I definitely do not want to leave, but. If YouTube can't make some adjustments, I'm going to have a hard time justifying doing what I do um, on this level. And I hope that you guys understand that. That, that, that like, I, I, just, I just don't know how I could sacrifice all that time for, like, no real reward. So, anyway... What am I drawing tonight, asks Jean. My own sister is like, shut up. Um, New Orleans. Good old New Orleans. Uh, in the mood to draw a city, draw something kind of realistic, and we will uh, see how it goes. It's probably going to take a while for this to, to really start to look like much of anything, and I'm just sort of jumping around, um, inking like big parts here and there, and eventually it's going to hopefully start to look like an actual rainy evening in the Big Easy. I'd be crushed if you had to leave too. I don't want to. 
I don't plan to right now, okay? I'm just talking this thing through. Criminal is almost 5,000 now. Okay, that's still not very good for me. I'm, I'm grateful for the 5,000. I would have expected more. I would have ex and, and, and that's not like saying like, I deserve more. That's not, that's a, that's a different statement. I'm saying I would have expected more based on the analytics that I study. Um, I thought that it had been less than, I thought that it had been more than 24 hours. But now that you say that, like, um, Gabriel, it reminds me that like, um, I'd uploaded it and there was a weird glitch where it hadn't published. So I had to like, I, I didn't realize it for a while. I had to go back and, and say like, publish. <laughs> Come down to New Orleans, it'd be great to see you. I'd love to go back to New Orleans. No plans right now, but I'd love to go back. Squeaky Wheel gets the grease for content creators on YouTube. Yeah, and the thing is, even if like everybody interested in my content heard me talking about this, that's not close to big enough for, for uh, YouTube to notice. So I have to hope that somebody that has a much, much bigger uh, show than mine... Uh, is dealing with some of the same issues and and can make YouTube uh, wake up and uh, and take note of what's going on. I mean, I'm I'm lending my voice, but my voice, all things considered, is not going to get he heard by like a million people, right? It's going to get uh, heard at at best from a few hundred thousand at best right now. Um, it needs to be heard by millions if YouTube is going to notice. We'll see. We will see. You planning on more manga reviews with the Japan trip? One. I mean, maybe more down the road, but one. Opinions on Kappa. I just talked about it for like, what, 30 minutes. I just talked about it for 30 minutes. <laughs> Build my own website and go it alone with Patreon. Yeah, I could. But that's going to be a small audience if, if, I, if it's only pay. Um, I know my channel's have affected Damien. Uh, even if they don't like um, specifically target me like saying that I make child content, they're definitely already, they've made changes to the algorithm that mean that my show is not getting seen by nearly as many as it used to. I, I can I can tell that for sure. A good Hellblazer episode, huh? No worries, Damien. I was just uh, exaggerating, but uh, copper sucks. Uh, yeah, Copa. I mean, the idea behind it sounds innocent and innocuous you know it's like yeah i agree actually with with what the stated purpose is that, that nobody should be gathering uh data about children's viewing habits that that's creepy and weird because you shouldn't be targeting them with advertising so we shouldn't be gathering that stuff but um but where, where was i going with that um but I'm not convinced that that's the actual full purpose of the act. I personally do really think that there's a, a strong chance that a lot of television networks lobbied to have this bill passed to um, hurt YouTube. Which is dumb because, like, can it work short term? Yeah, but it's not going to work long term. The writing's on the wall. The YouTube and streaming is the way of the future. That once once the technology exists and people have their preferences, that's not going to go anywhere. I was around when this thing called Napster became popular, uh, which was just like this program where you could just like people could upload songs and anyone could download it for free, and the music industry flipped out and and justifiably so they were worried about losing all their money 
And their solution at first was to like try to make everything Napster did illegal. But that wasn't the solution. The solution was like, honestly, like Apple figured it out. They were like, oh, we'll charge 99 cents for a song, which really wasn't that much. And pretty much everyone was like, yeah, that's a pretty easy thing to do. Like, you know, the, if the price is right and the interface is easy, people will, most people will generally still like do that instead of steal. And I believe that. I, I really do. As long as you make it easy, people will pay a fair price for a product. Um, and, you know, streaming is the way, the way forward. It, it's, it's not going away. TV will never really be the, the dominant force again. Anyway, disagree with YouTube being a fully viable replacement. I'm not saying a replacement. Let me make that clear, Clay. Um, uh, I th I, YouTube and streaming is part of the way forward. Obviously, like, television still gets a bigger overall audience for like you know what it delivers and can justify bigger advertising rates and therefore have better production values so um but you can just see how powerful like netflix became so quickly and realized like oh yeah streaming's the way of the future and the idea of youtube being this sort of great equalizer a Leveling the playing field for everyone. Anyone can upload the content that they want to create that interests them. And surprise, surprise, there's an audience for it. Um, that's all I'm saying. It's like, you know, YouTube helps us deliver this niche content. And uh, that ain't going away, in my opinion. I guess you're only going to have to do G-rated content. Well, no, maybe the opposite, James. Maybe the opposite. Like, you know, if my content was, like, explicit, um, maybe it would be more obvious that it ain't for kids. But uh, at the same time, like, that would feel forced. Like, if I was just talking, like, naturally and stuff like that, and I didn't care, I... I I curse quite a bit, to be honest. I, I just do. That's how I talk. And I tell some pretty um, off-color, I guess, jokes. Because I just like getting a reaction out of people. But that isn't the clearest way to deliver the message for what I want to create with my show. I want to, like, you know, have some really clear arguments. Um, so I've, I, I try to sort of, like, intentionally downplay that. My instincts are always humor. I wish I could, like, you know, create this purely humor-based, but um, uh, there's other things that I want to talk about that, that aren't humorous, you know? Not everything about criminal is, is hilarious to talk about. I've been reading some manga, and I think JoJo's Bizarre Adventures is really good. Do you know anime? Um, I haven't seen the anime, but I have read some of uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I'm, I'm, it, it's been going a long time, so I've got a lot to catch up on before I can like uh, make a video and, and talk to everybody about it. I found my channel this past year. You and your content helped me through a rough patch. That's really awesome to hear. Thank you. It's helped me through a rough patch. Like I started this show because of some severe depression. And I just needed a project to um, engage myself on. And uh, it's helped me a lot with that. Uh, I don't want to lose it. I don't want to lose it. But I also just don't want to, like, give away my content and, and have YouTube potentially still making money, but not me. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I love Transformers, the movie. I do too. Yeah, so go ahead and hit me with, with some questions. I'm, I'm basically done with my uh, sort of like rant slash update on where things are. And uh, 
happy to engage as much as I can. Thank you for hearing me out, everybody. Hello, no, no, no. <laughs> YouTube stinks. Yeah, but the you know what? Unfortunately, it's still the biggest platform. So uh, while there are other places that can host, they don't have nearly the same reach. Um, so everything's a compromise, you know. It's not fun to compromise, but you have to be realistic. AA? Good. Good for you. You're basically our only comic book dude actually print out tropes. Huh? Don't quite get that. Uh, I have played Spider-Man for PS4. That was a great game. I really enjoyed it. Um, if I had more time, I would download the extra content and play that, but uh, just not really an option right now. But hey, if uh, YouTube just totally messes up and... Uh, I, I, I'm, you know, I don't get any money. That leaves me with tons of time to play video games. I jest. Don't worry. Would I consider YouTube a monopoly? Uh, not a monopoly. Definitely not. An oligopoly? Possibly. Possibly. Um... But there's room. There, there, there's room to beat them. But the thing is, they have so many resources behind them in terms of, like, you know, their bandwidth. Uh, it, I don't know how someone... The, YouTube was the was the, um, the first to do it as big and well as they did. You know, somebody would have been that person. But they also had the, the benefit of being basically the first. They could build and it took a long time for them to get to the point where they are. It's very hard to imagine another company getting the resources to compete on the same level. Very hard to imagine somebody being able to do that. Watch a YouTube video on oligopoly. It means, like, while you're not the um, only one uh, in the business, you're so big that no one can truly compete on the same playing field. You know what I wouldn't be surprised to see happen one day? And I don't know how you would do this, but, like, back in the day, um, Bell was the biggest telephone organization. And they essentially became such a big monopoly that the federal government did have to break them up. And uh, so they basically became regional players. And I don't know, but if something like that happened, you know, like where nobody can really realistically compete with YouTube, maybe they'd break them up into some sort of like smaller regional players as well. And they'd become separate companies that compete with each other. It's possible. Never heard anyone talk about it realistically, but I can sort of imagine a scenario like that. There is antitrust stuff in the works. Okay. Most of them have been reabsorbed into AT&T. Yeah, but now there's other players in the field. Like other, pl it, it gave other players the opportunity to grow and compete. So, yeah. I mean, I don't think anyone feels that they, like, have to go with AT&T. Well, the next video will be the last for um, Crime Month, and then I'm done with theme months for a while. I've got some fun episodes coming up uh, that I think uh, will appeal to all sorts of people. Uh, should be a lot of fun. We shall see. But um, I'm excited 
to move into some new territory. But before that, I'm going to talk. I get to talk about one of my personal favorite crime comics. I'm pretty pretty stoked for it. My Patreon supporters got to vote on the topics, but um, I think it's a good one. Thoughts on art versus artist? Oof, too broad for me to tackle right now. YouTube can't decide if it's competing with Facebook or Netflix right now. Well, don't try to compete with Facebook huh, right now. I have considered a Calvin and Hobbes episode. I mean, it, as far as uh, comic strips go, uh, I think I think a lot of people would agree that Calvin and Hobbes was definitely one of the all-time greatest and uh it definitely is worthy of an episode um and i don't think i've really seen one about it like doing what i do so yeah it, it's definitely something i'd enjoy doing um i think it's realistic to consider that like as something that would come out in 2020 Um, have I covered Will Eisner's The Spirit? Not directly yet. Um, Will Eisner is definitely, uh, somebody that I want to talk about in, um, in depth. Uh, definitely, um, a huge inspiration to me as an artist. Uh, somebody that I've always, always enjoyed. Um, one of my biggest regrets is never getting to see him speak. And I had an opportunity where he was going to be a speaker at the Small Press Expo back in like, I don't know, maybe like 2004, 2005, 2004, I think. And uh, he was going to speak with uh, Frank Miller and Paul Pope. And unfortunately, he, um, he wasn't feeling too well. Uh, those were towards his last days. And he didn't, he didn't make it to the convention. So... Um, I, I got to see Frank Miller and Paul Pope speak, which was great, but I never got a chance to see uh, Will Eisner. That was my that was my shot. I was really really excited for it, and uh, still pretty disappointed that that it just never happened. But anyway, yeah, I love Will Eisner. I'd love to talk about him. Here's my usual donation. Any thoughts on the Mandalorian? Well, thank you for the, for the, for the donation. Uh, I love the Mandalorian. It's so cool. I won't talk too much about it because I know there are people like in Europe that don't even have the potential to get Disney Plus yet. And uh, some people may be planning to get it at some point, but not yet. All I can say is uh, it's definitely something like new and different, but that still totally feels like Star Wars. Um, and uh, I also get a big vibe off of it of like, you know, um, I think its influences are cool. I think that Star Wars has always had Western influences, maybe like serial and World War II type stuff, that, that, that's true, um, but also um, a lot of Japanese cinema, stuff by Akira Kurosawa, and while I don't necessarily see um, like Akira Kurosawa uh, represented in The Mandalorian, I do see manga represented, and, and, I, and very specifically, I feel like um, there's a lot that reminds me of a, a Lone Wolf and Cub, um, I haven't done an episode about them yet, but I but I definitely will. Um, Lone Wolf and Cub, um, pretty fascinating uh, manga by a um, a separate like writer and artist. Um, and a lot of people in manga are like a solo creator. There are plenty of teams, but but like I think it's a little more common to have like a writer artist be like one person. Uh, anyway. Um, It'll be cool to talk about. It'll be cool to talk about. It was a movie series. That's true. That's true. You had to refresh the stream. Oh, man. I'm one of the few that don't have Disney+. Plus. All I can say is I like... Oh, here's how much I like it. Like, I, I don't get, like, lots of action figures, but, yeah. I did get one of the Mandalorian. I just liked his look. I like this. I like that a lot. 
I think that's a pretty cool design. It's a, it's slightly simplified from Boba Fett, actually. Um, that said, I've never bought these um, Star Wars black figures. I like the sculpting. I like the color. Uh, I don't love his sort of... Um, his posability feels like kind of like both loose and stiff at, at points. Like some of it feels a, like a little loose and some of it feels too stiff and I just cannot get him to stand up. Like, I just can't. Like, I'm trying to like, what, he has to lean forward like this and stand like with chicken legs? I cannot get this guy to stand up. So, um, that I don't love. I just sort of have him like uh, leaning against the wall over here. But I like the look of this. I, I think it's a it's a really cool look. I love this... Um, this cape it reminds me of something more like um, a West in a Western, like uh, uh, Clint Eastwood wearing a Syrah, you know. Anyway, so yeah, I like the I like the Mandalorian, but I've always been a, a Star Wars fan. Uh, tape his feet, yeah, I could. Why did inking styles change so significantly from the '60s to the '80s? Pen technology improvements, more like um, printing improvements, honestly. Print technology. Uh, they were printing like in the 60s on newsprint um, uh, line work would would bleed and smear um, when the, when it was printed um, as technology evolved uh, that printing could get more and more precise so that so in turn the inking uh, inkers realized they could get more detailed I've never watched Invader Zim actually no uh, the the only thing I've seen by um, the creator is uh, his comics Joan and Vasquez, right? Obviously, I'm talking more than I'm inking tonight. Uh, but I'm having a. Thanks for for hearing me out. Um, feels good to get my thoughts out, even if it's not like you know to everybody that listens or anything. Um, feels good to talk about some of this stuff. Appreciate it. Do I think the Mando will bump Boba Fett to the wayside? Maybe. Boba Fett had a cool look, but he never really had any amazing story you know he, he he appeared in the movies but he didn't he didn't do that much i mean he sort of did plot wise but you know we didn't get to like see him at his full potential or anything weird like that um i think uh the mandalorian will get to know a little better also boba fett didn't necessarily seem very um heroic or anything and not that the Mandalorian will be but I think we'll get to understand the Mandalorian's um, motivations better over time we'll see Trying to figure out if I can get a free year of Disney Plus. A free year? What is that, like a hint that that's what you want for Christmas or something? It's pretty affordable. 70 bucks for a year. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Yeah, The Mandalorian is definitely an anti-hero, no question. I mean, he might even end up being an anti-villain, for all we know. We'll see. Still hard to understand his, his motives, but he seems to be working towards a purpose other than just being rich. He seems to, like, uh, I don't want to give it away. He just, you know, he, he's, he's working for something. 
to me that already makes him a little more interesting than Boba Fett. It's very Lone Wolf and Cub. Yeah, I said that earlier. Will I ever do a Comic Tropes edition of your own created work? Well, I did once. I, I, I did a uh, review of a, uh, or at least like a look, at my uh, Transformers comic that I made when I was 10 years old. Beyond that, I don't think, um, I think it would be too self-serving to sort of like uh, promote one of my own comics with a full episode um you know i'll mention it but I, I i won't do an episode about my like you know current comics because i i'm also not going to be able to be objective about it i i was able to be a little objective about something that i made when i was 10 years old and i don't have a vested interest in you know attracting an audience for it so that was a unique situation but um i uh, know so If by any chance the YouTube stuff sorts out and I'm able to start going back to making what I was, my plan was in 2020 to put out a comic book. Um, so, but in order to do that, I have to uh, pay some talent and, and stuff like that. So um, I'm only going to be able to do that if, if YouTube sort of goes back to what it was. For the next stream, I should draw something about the Mandalorian. Yeah, that sounds fun. Why no superhero drawing tonight? I just felt like drawing city, working on architecture, um, and uh, seeing where that takes me. I love drawing buildings and stuff. That's all I can say. And... Uh, if I can just get like a little more of this done, I'm also planning on doing some uh, work with Copic markers to really energize this because the cool thing about New Orleans is uh, all its neon lights. It's not the same neon lights that you get in New York, Vegas, Tokyo, places like that, but it's... Uh, it's still a big part of what the city is. You're coloring with Copics right now? That's awesome. Tell us your favorite New Orleans spots. Um, yeah, sure. Let me think. Um, well, uh... My sister just mentioned the Camellia Grill. That was a dope spot. It was, you know, just a diner where you could get good uh, old-fashioned like burgers and shakes. Uh, that's a pretty cool place uptown. Uh, in terms of like, you know, nice sort of sit-down restaurants and stuff, um, almost anything run by the Brennan family, uh, like Commander's Palace. Pretty, pretty spectacular, amazing stuff. Uh, yeah, Commander's Palace is definitely something special. Uh, it's the first place I discovered Ruth's Chris, and I uh, love that place, love that steakhouse. Um, there's a great place called Mother's where you can get a good po' boy. Uh, what else was really good? Um, sometimes just for like, you know, sort of um, like people watching and stuff, I would go to some of the more touristy spots on Bourbon Street, like... Um, what were the names of some of those places it's been a while well like pat o'brien's uh, that's a pretty famous place for its hurricanes uh that's a drink and then there was a place that made oh tropical isle tropical isle had like these uh drinks called hand grenades though that was fun um there's so many good restaurants and, and bars in new orleans that's what it that's what it is you know it's just restaurants and bars uh definitely miss it definitely miss it it was, it was great Some of you in here are from New Orleans, right? Um, 
mention one if you got that. Trying to publish my book next year. Go go for it, Itai. How long will this stream be? I don't know. What, what time is it now? My time, it's 7.40. I could do this like another hour or so. So it'll be a little while. Been a while. Is anybody out there um, actively working on a comic book right now? I don't mean right this second, but I mean just like right now, like, you know, these days currently. Like, are you writing, coloring, illustrating, anything like that? A comic book? I just finished drawing a page for a comic book. That was that was fun to get back in and uh, do that. Uh, being inked by my friend Randy and I think he honestly is a better inker than me so I think he's improving my artwork which is kind of cool to see let's take a look and see what uh, pterodactyl's working on one Samuel's working on one we lost a bunch of comic books in a flood down there yeah I lost a year's worth of comics no one can predict disasters yeah you ain't late Eric if you're here you're here Learning how to draw in order to make a book. You should, yeah. I'm actually working on my own comic book. I'm the writer and the penciler. Wow, a lot of a lot of folks working on comics. That's awesome, guys. Um, you know, when it comes out, definitely uh, hit me on social media, and I'm I'm happy to uh, do the best I can for like you know passing it on and seeing if that gets you any traction. Um, least I can do what a coincidence my parents are in New Orleans right now on a vacation yeah it's a cool place man sadly as close as I've been to New Orleans is New Orleans Square and Disneyland I'm about to be in uh, Tokyo Disney in uh, about a week. Pretty pretty excited for that, going back to uh, Tokyo. I love that city. I don't know what it is. I, I don't. I, I love so much about it. Like, I've always just bumped into friendly people, good food, um, just like a real appreciation for comics and, and that kind of culture. So... I'll definitely try to make some bonus content for comic tropes while I'm over there. Hit some uh, good comic book stores and places like that, art supply stores, make some episodes. Drawing, inking, and coloring, that is really tough. You need to break up the tasks, yep. Other than for the channel, any other reason for the trip to Tokyo? Fun. Chrissy and I just enjoy it there so yeah simple as that got a really good deal on like the uh, plane tickets basically and uh, so that made it worth it we we're like because we want to hit new places but uh, we hit, we got such a good deal we were like all right I guess we're going back to Tokyo <laughs> Yeah, I leave for that in about a week. Less. Less than a week, right? Let me think. Yeah, less than a week now. Um, do you have any comic book suggestion that has the same feel as JTHM? Um, I mean, I guess the stuff by, like, what's his name? Roman Dirge? Squee? And, uh, well, Squee's by, you know, Joan and Vasquez. And, um, of course, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Beyond that? I don't know. I guess I'd classify them as sort of goth comics, and, and I don't feel like I'm an expert in that area. So beyond that, I, I don't know. 
Well, it, not as funny, but like actually, The Crow by James O'Barr, The Crow, like you know, stylistically and like you know, attitude-wise, is kind of like that. Um, it's just it's not a humor book. But yeah, you should you should read the original Crow. The host. Uh, oh yeah, the host. The host is good. Who did that? Was that who directed that? Let me look that up real quick. Cause I think that I've seen other movies by that. Um. Yeah, Bong Joon Ho. Bong Joon Ho. Uh. I just saw one of his movies today. I, um, what's his latest one? Um, Parasite. I just saw Parasite today. Um, I love Snowpiercer. He did that one. Um, what else has he done? He's done a bunch of movies. I've seen all his movies. He's a, he's a really good director. Bong Joon-ho. <sighs> James Straczynski's run on Amazing Spider-Man. Uh it wasn't for me, ultimately. Um, I did think that it was some of um, John Romita Jr.'s overall best uh, penciling work. I do think that he did some excellent illustration work on, on that book. Um, I wasn't as into all the sort of mystical stuff that um, J. Michael Straczynski decided to to do with um, Spider-Man. I, I, it was different, and, and so I give him credit for trying something different. Uh, like all the spider totem stuff, but um, it wasn't really for me. Uh, I didn't really care for Moreland, although I did end up feeling like he was well used uh, for not being one of my favorite villains. I, I did feel that late, later he was well used for um, Into the Spider-Verse. Um, I thought that that made sense. Uh, but, eh, I, I didn't really care for all the sort of mystical stuff. Uh, so, And he also did... Um, that weird story where uh, Green Goblin had kids with Gwen Stacy. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, who approved that idea? I gotta go back and look at who the editors were at the time that, like, thought that that was a good idea. Because that just does not feel right. That was a weird, weird idea. Frank Frazetta was a ghost artist on Little Abner. Oh, cool. Blue Oyster Cult's Godzilla should be played when I land in Tokyo. That would be cool. Uh, an 80s movie called The Hidden. I feel like I have. What did I think of Parasite? I thought it was great. Um, I, I, I didn't really go in with much expectations. I hadn't read any reviews. I just said, eh, let's just see what it is because I trust the director from before. And I think that might be the best way to go in without any expectations. Um, it's a twisty, turny uh, plot that makes you often feel very uncomfortable. Uh, so, well done. Yeah. It's about the class system. It's about family. Uh, it's about a lot of things. It's definitely one I need to keep thinking about to uh, form sort of a full understanding in my own mind about it. So, yeah. Will I be going for a day or night drawing? This is night. This is definitely night. In fact, one thing I'm gonna no, not quite yet. I'm gonna I'm gonna um, try to color some of this, but I need a moment to uh, ink in a few more areas before I can do that. But I'm gonna go back and forth once I get some more ink in. Everyone knows Norman Osborn always used protection after he saw how Harry turned out. Dark. He 
Yeah, I I can't believe. I just sometimes like a story just doesn't feel right to you, and uh, that was like it might have been called Original Sins or something like that. Um, that's how I feel about that, and I guess you just sort of get to a point where you realize some of the superhero stories in like serialized comics just aren't for you, and that you know you basically can form your own head canon of what happened and what didn't and, and i don't feel bad like just sort of discounting some stories and like going eh, in my opinion that didn't happen some people say like no if it's printed it's it's you know in continuity and it's canon i'm like eh. by that like logic like none of this stuff like it, it's it's too many things to have like you know happened so it's like I just sort of like take it all very loosely in superhero stuff, like what happened and what didn't. I take it very loosely. Is there a trick to blending inks? Probably, but I haven't learned it yet. If you had to get a comic theme tattoo, what would you get? That's a cool question, James. Um, one thing I would definitely love to get would be um, the, like something by Mike Mignola, just because I'm such a fan of his work. Uh, I've got an art book by him that has like a uh, a sun and a moon, or at least like a sun and a star or something. And I've always thought that that would like really look awesome. Um, just above my elbows on my back arm like you know like just like right here because they're both kind of circles that would be something I'd really love to have but um I just haven't been able to pull the trigger on getting a, any tattoo yet I don't know I don't know what it would take to uh convince me to start down that path I do I do admire a lot of tattoo artwork I've also seen a lot of tattoo artwork that I'm just, like, horrified by. But um, when it's well done, I, th I think tattoos are really cool. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not against the idea. I just haven't really been able to uh, fall so in love with an idea that I've pulled the trigger yet. But one year in New York, they were giving away free um, Game of Thrones house sigil tattoos to, like, promote the, um, like, HBO was doing that to promote the show. And um, I got there like a day after that that promotion, like it was it was timed around one of the comic cons. And uh, if I was there during that, I would have totally taken them up on that. I would have definitely gotten a free, like uh, House Greyjoy tattoo. You touched on this topic when you were a crime fighter in Seattle on a recent live. Can I post a link? Um, I'm going to hold off on that and I'll just, uh, say that like, you know, that, that is what I would probably make a comic book about next year if I can afford it. Um, so also I am going to make a Patreon exclusive video about like just sort of telling some stories from my time there. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep that for my patrons right now, but you can, like, look it up. You can look up Phoenix Jones and get an idea of what went on. Yeah, I like uh, Greyjoy. I, I, I don't know. You have any more film appearances in the works? No, not, not, not right now. Thanks. That was, that was definitely uh, an interesting experience to work on a... Uh, you know, sort of a uh, low-budget indie film. That was that was fun. Um, currently, no plans. But you know, like if the opportunity crossed my path, I'd absolutely uh, take another acting role uh, if somebody really wants me to.
<clears throat> they had a table with sandwiches. They did feed us. They, they, they there was always um, the there was snacks and water while we worked, and then like at the end, I only worked you know for one day, and then like the um, uh, director uh, treated everyone to um, lunch. So yep, he was uh, really good about that. He was really good about like you know making it as uh, taking care, I should say, taking care of the talent. He he definitely did a very good job. So I was impressed. I would definitely be happy to work with him again. Yeah, apparently the Charlie's Angels movie came out this weekend. I don't think that that was published, publicized very well at all. I don't think many people knew that that was this weekend. Um, that surprised me. Like I, like I said, I went to see Parasite, and I was like, I saw like um, one of the theaters was playing Charlie's Angels. I was like, that came out. I knew it was coming out, but I didn't know when. Like I think the studio did a horrible job of promoting that. It bombed. Yeah, it bombed, but I, I don't necessarily think it's all the movie's fault. Like, that, that was not publicized very well, in my opinion. I mean, maybe it's not good. I don't know. I didn't see it. Who's my current working favorite artist? Hmm. Um, well, Mike Mignola, I guess. Uh, Sean Gordon Murphy's way up there. And uh, if he comes back, Stuart Eminen would be up there too. My favorite Batmobile on film. I like the Tumbler. Yeah. Um, I know it's not everybody's favorite, but I, I, I like the Tumbler a lot. Uh, after that, I would say the uh, 60s Batmobile. And then finally, the uh, one from uh, 1989 Batman. Those would be my personal top three. See a pterodactyl. Yeah, I know this is changing it already. Like just putting in that little bit of color, but uh, what can I say? I got I got a plan here. I got a plan. I've never seen the Giger design. I'll have to uh, I'll have to look for that. It's hilarious to think that Giger did a design. It must have been for the Tim Burton one, right? The bat plane that lasted all of 30 seconds before Joker shot it down. With a pistol, that's right. Had to sell some toys.
the Thanos copter. Uh, I don't know. Was that ever made into a toy? If it was, I, I would guess somebody like Hot Wheels or Matchbox or something did it as a joke. But I don't know. It was in the comic and it was serious. Uh, I haven't read Providence by Alan Moore, sorry. Um, I haven't read everything by Alan Moore. I've always enjoyed what I've read by him, but I will say that as a person, Moore is definitely a weirdo. Um, I, I love his work, but I don't know if I could get along with him as a person. He uh, had an interview, I think, just yesterday or something. And um, let's see, uh, Moore was saying that he felt that, like, superheroes have, like, always been done by a primarily uh, white creator and, and feature primarily white characters. And in his opinion... Uh, that meant that, like, there's this weird uh, subtextual thing of, like, um, white power racism going on with superheroes. And I was like, yeah, I think you're overreaching on that one. I think it has more to do with uh, the people that created it, like, you know, when comics were, were growing. I don't think that it was uh, ever an overtly racist thing like you want to make it out to be. Uh, you know, I was like, hmm. Maybe you're too smart for your own good, Alan. Some interesting dots you just connected there. <laughs> There's problematic aspects to superheroes, but I think he went a little far with that one. How's Disney Plus? Uh, I don't know if the Gargoyles cartoon is on there. I've never watched that. Um, but I like Disney Plus. It's really good. Not that comics are for white supremacists. He feels that there's like this like angle behind it, like that it was being created by like um, not white supremacists, but there was like this like white power fantasy behind it. It's weird. He uh, he's got some some ideas, man. Yeah, they, they were, Brian. They were created by, like, white guys. I mean, yeah, well, white Jewish guys just trying to uh, reach the biggest audience they could. They, they, they weren't able to make money in other publishing areas because of discrimination, and they were able, but they were able to get into comics. And, uh, and they did the best they could, I think, with, uh, with that. And, you know, maybe they could have been more... Uh, progressive with some of their ideas of like you know um including uh, more minorities like asians and blacks and stuff like that but uh you know it just wasn't the way people thought back then i guess it's not a not an excuse i mean it's it's too bad but it's also just the way it was everywhere you can't like i don't think you can hold just one media accountable for something that like every media was guilty of why do my streams always get so political must be me have I read the Berserk manga? No, a lot of people constantly ask me to uh, cover that one, but I'm afraid I haven't read it. Tell me what it's about. Is it samurai stuff? Or something else? Ah, 
Mandrake the Magician had the first sidekick in comics who was black. That's right, he did, didn't he? He had, um, was it a strong man or something? Can't remember that very well. Captain Marvel had a steamboat. He was black. Wasn't the most uh, sensitive depiction. Naoki, Urasawa, Billy Bat, all artists should read this manga. Man, I, I'm with you. Uh, I, I, it, it hasn't been released over here officially, like uh, in English yet, has it? Um, but I read everything by Naoki Urasawa. He's, he's. Oh, someone earlier said who's like my favorite like current uh, like you know artist or something. I sh I should have thought of that. I was thinking too American because like honestly like Naoki Urasawa is probably my favorite overall creator that's that's alive today. I think he's the greatest living creator right now. Love his work. Love it. Berserk is a dark fantasy. What pet would you write a comic book about? <laughs> hmm. What pet would I write a comic book about? Maybe a koi fish, because it would be so hard for it to do anything. It would be fascinating to see how it would accomplish that. He'd be really clever, and he'd design a suit of armor that allowed him to get out of the water. Everyone would tell him, no, koi fish should stay in the water. What are you thinking? And he'd be like, no, I want to explore. <laughs> I don't know. Do you think we three could make a good movie? I think it could make an excellent movie. Chibi. Oh, my kitty Chibi is... Um... She's an old girl at this point. She's she's not doing great, to be honest. Um, she just uh, she's old. She's diabetic. She's not. She doesn't make a mess. She still keeps herself clean, but she is skin and bones. Um, she we we give her insulin, of course, and uh, check with the doctor about like you know her blood. But my cat Chibi is. Uh, she is, she's in her final days. It is that that's all I can say, and it breaks my heart. Um, I love that cat so, so much. Um, just have a kitty that I really, really like named Chibi. She's been on some of these live streams. Hey, Chibi. She hides a little bit now, which isn't a great sign. She hides a little. I'm sure some of you out there have had to deal with like pets that get older. It's it's rough. It's a really tough time right now. Furs probably had the most interesting adventures. Yeah, she was a good outdoor kitty. Where is Chibi? She she's she's hiding down the hall. Um, there's a bathroom, and she likes to uh, she likes to hide in it these days. She likes. It. We don't use it much. But there's a bathroom like down here, a full bathroom, and uh, there's a pretty nice comfy rug. So she's turned that into her uh, nap spot. And I call it hiding because it's not really like somewhere we go. Thank you for saying nice things. Will we get a live stream from Japan? I'm, I'm seriously considering that, actually, uh, Najiad. I'm seriously considering that. Um, I think that would be a, a blast. Uh, where I would do it? is the biggest question i don't necessarily know but possibly like from my hotel or something if there's a view i'd rather do it out in the streets and like let everybody see it my cat likes to sleep a lot Ch chibi sleeps a lot she she's really really skinny right now um thanks for the compliment matthew that's really nice it's t it's tough right now it's tough right now um i i don't want to say goodbye to her She's been like such a good friend to me for for so many years. Uh, I don't want to say goodbye. Uh, I don't want her to be in pain. I don't. 
I don't think she's in pain, but I don't. We don't have a lot of like good days where we just hang out and uh, and chill. You know, like I'll pick her up and she lets me, but she doesn't really purr anymore, and she'll like you know, kind of take off after a moment. Um, she used to just enjoy being held by me or just sleeping on my chest or something. That was just uh, that was just the way we did things. But uh, yeah, cat's getting old. Cat's getting old. Beatles reference. <laughs> Some pets are like relatives. They are. They are. She's my little girl. Um, love the cat. Don't know what I'm going to do, uh, but we shall see. We shall see. Just trying to make her as comfortable as possible for right now. I was with my best friend tonight putting her dog Indy to sleep. Oh, it was time. Oh, Gene, I'm sorry. That must have been rough. That must. That sounds tough. I'm glad you were uh, with your friend. That 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 always means a lot, you know. I've uh, Chibi's had diabetes for two years now. I've been giving her. Uh, twice daily injections of um, insulin uh, so you know that's a lot of work to be putting into this cat but it's because I I love her I'm, she, she's the best I, I don't want to say goodbye um, at the same time you know I don't think she's in pain but does she have quality of life I think honestly she, she's towards the end I, she doesn't do anything anymore she just sleeps so, kind of depressing, sorry. I'll let it go. But I, all, all I can say is on these live streams, I try to be brutally honest about everything. I, 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 I don't try to keep secrets, and I uh, definitely don't lie. So. It's about a 10-hour flight from Seattle to Japan. How do you stay comfortable? Uh, it ain't easy. Uh, all I can, you, you have to force yourself to get up every once in a while and move around. Uh, because otherwise you're in danger of getting like, you know, blood clots in your legs and stuff if you sit that long. So I've always, uh, made it a point to, uh, get up every, uh, every bit once in a while and just like walk, uh, up and down the, um, the plane. Um, other than that, you know, you try to sleep. I'm never really successful at that. Um, and then, uh, you watch movies and draw <laughs> it's uh it's not fun the 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 air the airline part of it the the airplane stuff ain't, ain't fun you put up with it apparently i'm getting there the day after tokyo comic-con didn't know that uh until just recently otherwise i would have tried to uh have scheduled it so that I could have gone to the Comic-Con. But uh, that's okay. Lung cancer. Jeez, that sounds tough. Oh, let's see. Have I read the 2012 Taskmaster miniseries? I have not. At one point, he fights an entire village of people who all think they're Adolf Hitler. <laughs> Yeah, flying is pretty miserable. It used to be kind of fun, but uh, meh, not really anymore. All I can say is that uh, on the international flights, they generally give you like an entertainment screen in front of you where you can select from a pretty wide variety of movies. So I usually fit in something like four to five movies in a row. I just like see all the movies that I haven't seen. Uh, yeah.
Taskmaster is a cool villain. Taskmaster, I think, is supposed to be in that upcoming uh, Black Widow movie, but I don't know who's playing him, I just realized. I have no idea who's playing Taskmaster. Good villain, though. <laughs> you enjoy flying. Airports are a pain, but actual flying is fun. Uh, I agree with you for, like, a short trip, but um, I, I don't enjoy being in a plane for, like, you know, uh, more than maybe five hours. As soon as it gets to five, I'm getting pretty antsy about everything. I, I want to get out of there. More power to you if you have the uh, patience for it and, and, and enjoy it. Yeah, that's awesome. I load up on airborne and uh, hand sanitizer and just like, you know, really pay attention to like uh, washing my hands and making sure that I like uh, I'm not rubbing my eyes or anything like that because I get really nervous about like uh, getting sick. Never understood Taskmaster. He can copy anything you do. Uh, visually, if he can see it, he can duplicate it. Um, I think he's a mutant. If he's, I, I'm pretty sure that that's his uh, thing. Uh, they don't really go into it too too much, but like, yeah, basically, um, if he sees, like, you know, if he sees Bruce Lee, he can fight like Bruce Lee. He sees Captain America, he can fight like Captain America. Except, some sometimes like a superhero has an advantage. For instance, Captain America is at peak physical human perfection taskmaster can't always keep up with that as for as long a time you know he can fight just as well but he doesn't have quite the same stamina as what captain america does he doesn't want to fight in certain styles like for instance uh, uh moon knight uh has more of a boxing background and he's willing to take a punch or two some some people when they're fighting they can take a uh, a, a punch uh Taskmaster doesn't want to do that, so he doesn't follow, like, Moon Knight style. That's just, like, that kind of a thing. Taskmaster cannot crawl up walls like Spider-Man. He, he can only, like, do what he can physically see. If he plays a... It's what only what he can see, okay? So he doesn't just instantly get, like, access to every move Captain America knows. It's only what, he's, what he can see. Like, if he can study a tape or something like that. And he can even... Uh, yeah, he can't copy powers. He can just duplicate physical things that a person can do. So he can actually even put a video on, like, double speed. And for a brief time, as long as his stamina will keep up, he can duplicate that. Like, so that's pretty crazy. That's about the extent of what he can do. And he keeps himself in, like, fantastic physical shape. So he's essentially, like, one of the, one of the best fighters as a, as a person. Kind of like Echo, yeah. Kind of like Echo. So, um, yeah, he's an interesting character. He's, he's definitely, like, a good... And, and the thing is, uh, he's not, like, a villain that, like, wants to take over the world. He's just, like, a mercenary. And primarily, he works as a trainer for other uh, criminals. He'll, he'll train, like... Um, troops and stuff for for groups like hydra he is smart he doesn't like want to get into fights with superheroes he knows that that just doesn't tend to go well so he he rarely takes like actual like missions or anything rarely and i and i always like how smart he is about that can you imagine the germ quota on an international flight yeah, but people are durable. Like I've been on a lot of international flights, and I and I've never gotten sick from them. I mean, knock on wood. But uh, yeah, kind of terrified by what they'll do with Taskmaster and Black Widow. I think he'll look cool. We'll see. He injected himself with something that enhanced his procedural memory. Okay, so not a mutant. That's good. I mean, mutant is almost too easy for for like you know everybody's origin. Um, so that's cool.
Start drinking emergency before you go to... Yeah, I, I, I was saying airborne is what I take. Have I been reading Priest's Deathstroke? I haven't been reading that. Is it good? I like Christopher Priest's writing. I like emergency more. All right, well, maybe that's what I'll get. Are you going to have prints available of this? Uh, no plans for anything like that. I don't know if I'll even finish it. <clears throat> the UK spent decades trying to eradicate the common cold. The only thing that worked was high doses of zinc. Yeah, yeah, I don't think, uh, don't think uh, that's that's something we're likely to ever quite come up with a cure for. I don't think that um the average uh what'd you call it the average um pharmacy would want to i mean that that's they, they make more selling the cure for it and it's not lethal or anything like that so there's not a lot of motivation probably to uh cure outright cure the common cold it's not very good business is it not to be too cynical but The MCU seriously lacks cool mercenary assassin villains like Deathstroke. Well, yeah, they haven't quite gone that route, have they? They haven't used a lot of mercenaries. I don't know about Frank Miller. I have not read his most recent stuff, so it would be lovely to see him make a big comeback. We'll see. How about a comic tropes about wacky team-ups like Superman versus Muhammad Ali? Maybe. Maybe. Didn't Archie team up with the Punisher once? Archie's teamed up with some weird stuff. Archie's uh, gone up against the Punisher, the Predator. Yeah, they've done some weird team ups with with Archie. More power to him. It's funny. All right, what other questions? Archie should team up with All Might, sure. Archie versus Predator gets a lot funnier if you imagine it's an origin story for Mr. Weatherby. That makes sense. Is Mr. Weatherby on that uh, CW Archie show, Riverdale? I haven't seen that. I don't know. Miss Grundy... Uh, all them. Probably, right? They're probably all on it. Archie should team up with Batman. Archie should solve the Hellraiser puddle. Yeah, a uh, puzzle. Pu puddle. Hmm. Puzzle. Yeah, the lament configuration, right? They should uh, add that to uh, Afterlife with Archie. Archie solving the lament configuration.
Archie meets Hellraiser. We have such sights to show you. What if Miss Grundy's son's name is Solomon? What probably is. Do you watch Current Mood? What's Current Mood, Gene? I don't know what Current Mood is. Is that a YouTube show or something? Is that like a band? I don't, I don't know what Current Mood is. You and your hip stuff. Can't keep up. Archie meets a Vampirella. Coppo approved. Yep. Uh, if anyone could do all this, it's Archie. John My Mayer's Instagram TV talk show. I don't really like John Mayer. I, I wouldn't watch that. I don't like him. Yeah, Archie is fun. I've heard the real Mandarin is going to be the villain in Shang-Chi. I think so. I mean... I think so. They're not going to use uh, Shang Chi's father from uh, the comics, Fu Manchu. That's uh, not a very good. Uh, it's a pretty racist depiction of like you know a, a Chinese villain. So, and you're like, well, is the Mandarin much better? The Mandarin can be better. There's less baggage with the Mandarin. street and pirates alley artist and paint these streets daily have fun they possess very busy lines man they definitely do thanks cookie gail simone did a twitter poll asking better your veronica that ended on a perfect tie <laughs> i believe it there's something about them <laughs> i like betty and veronica I think Veronica is a little tricky to, to write sometimes because you can you can like make her kind of a, a bitchy basically and, and that's not really accurate like Veronica can be very sweet and, and and good so yeah I don't think that Veronica should be portrayed as like an outright villain that's that's not quite who she is I think that like that's taking her character too far but hey we all have opinions on uh, how characters should be presented right I assume you guys have all heard how uh, Disney just purchased uh, Archie. Definitely didn't see that one coming. Kidding. They didn't do that. Gene votes Betty. Yeah. Fu Manchu is played by Christopher Lee in four movies. Wait, that I didn't know. I love Christopher Lee. I did not know that. I have a friend's name, Josie, who looks like she should be in the Pussycats. That's cool. Josie and the Pussycats. Small tails and ears for hats. Did I get that right? I'm pretty sure I did.
I saw Charlie's Angels. It was just okay. Hmm. I can't say I'm super surprised. I'm felting your Christmas present while I watch. Ooh, Christmas present. Does me deserve a Christmas present? I don't know. I'm pretty excited to go into work tomorrow because unless something weird happened, um, I basically... Uh, earned my way into something called a president's club it's like two levels above like what i was at i sell cars so like you you basically we keep track of like where we're at with levels and it just means that i'll make um a lot more per sale so pretty excited for that um it's a big accomplishment so yeah youtube may be demonetizing stuff but as long as uh as long as I'm keeping my real job and all, should be okay. Thanks, thanks for all the congratulations. That's so cool. Yeah, it's a big deal. It's, it's uh, not not easy, uh, but I I work with a lot of really great coworkers and stuff that um. We all help each other, and uh, I like that. It's not the job I ever imagined myself having, but I've started to kind of like it on some levels. I like I like my coworkers and my bosses, so that's good. For a while, the, earlier this year, I sort of daydreamed of uh, doing YouTube full time, but. Um, with these new regulations, I, I feel like that's become unrealistic, so I'm trying to let that idea go. But I'll still keep doing YouTube, don't worry. As long as uh, everything shakes out okay. Should we be worried that Disney is becoming an entertainment monopoly? No, not really. If it, if it was, they'd get broken up. Um, they, they definitely control a lot of properties right now and stuff but no, there's still plenty of competition out there and in fact if you look at it um the uh who owns warner brothers um i forget who owns warner brothers right now but that company way bigger than disney way bigger than disney do you have to know a lot about cars to be a car salesman um not initially per se but it definitely helps eventually they they you know you're gonna you're gonna want to be able to just sort of speak in in you know broad terms about like you know the different engines and the different uh, features that uh vehicles have the trick with mine is i work for um a company that sells like basically every make and model so you know, if you work for, like, say, Ford or Mercedes-Benz, maybe you're, you know, memorizing about, like, ten cars, ten types of cars. But, like, for me, it's just dozens and dozens that you have to know a little bit about everyone. Um, so that can be a little tricky, but you get there. There's tools to help you learn, and you just keep your ears and eyes open. Yeah. All Disney does is make movies that are better than anyone else's. Well, I mean, th there's there's some truth to that. Like, you know, like Disney makes what people like, you know? They 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 pay some really close attention to what people like. 
and they deliver it and that's why they're successful they, they, they don't just you know when you're in entertainment you have to listen to the consumer and also give them what they don't know that they want you have to keep them guessing Corporate greed is diametrically in opposition to artistic pursuit. Yeah, the, the trick is getting people that are willing to um, take chances, like sort of trust the artists, and then just give them leeway. And that's, that's always been like, you know, a huge question in um, any sort of media. You know, like how much freedom to do 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 people need to, to produce a good product? Um, certainly in movies, television, but also like you know things like you know uh, books and, and media companies like that. So very tricky, very tricky question. Isn't Final Crisis basically artists versus the corporate machine of production? Yeah, but if they lose the creativity, then they don't produce the things that people want, and it dies. The day of... Um auteurs existing in cinema has been gone for a long time like there, there are still some out there but there's not many um, but that's that's something that's been gone for a long time now it sucks but that's how it is Turn it Do I like Kamala Khan as Ms. Marvel? Yeah, absolutely I do. I think she's got like a totally like likable winning personality. I think she's a great creation. Um, I think, uh, you know, like, what do you call it? Like, um, there's only like ever like one or two good characters that like Marvel or DC creates each decade, really. And I think most of them end up sort of being teen characters like, you know, uh, Runaways, or Nova, things like that. And now Miss Marvel, Miles Morales. I think that those characters have the most potential out of like what they create. What are my thoughts on DC shutting down Vertigo? I think it's a shame. Um, I think that, uh, you know, Black Label is basically taking over. But the thing is, uh, Vertigo was really all about Karen Berger. She was the one behind it that was making the choices on what got published through Vertigo. And it was her... Uh, taste and, and, and decision making that made Vertigo what it was. So 
once she moved on, Vertigo is is just a label, and it doesn't mean as much as, uh, you know, it, it, it's just a name. So it's all about the people running the thing. Marvel created so many in the 90s, and most don't exist anymore, but somehow Slapstick made it. Yeah, Slapstick. How is her Dark Horse line going? I'm not sure, but I think their Dark Horse in general is doing pretty well, so yeah. Um, you know. I You get to a point in comics where you'll ha always have, like, nostalgic affection for certain characters that you grew up reading but you'll also uh, realize that it's more entertaining to follow certain uh, creators than it is to follow characters uh, that that's my hot take and uh, Karen Berger is somebody worth following vertigo in and of itself not necessarily Uh, do you have a favorite female comic book artist? Uh, and will I do a Comic Tropes episode on her? Um, there's a few that I like a lot. I like Erica Henderson. I like Fiona Staples. I like... Um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm blanking on a name for a second. Give me a moment. Um, Sarah Pacelli. Um, I don't know. There's a lot. There's a lot of great female artists. Uh, Colleen Duran. Um, yeah, they're, they're all people that I'd love to give, uh, episodes to, so. Probably should do, uh, some more female talent, actually, in general. Like, they're probably a little underrepresented on my show. Uh, I read Next Men. I wasn't too into it. I wasn't too into it, but, um, you know... Power to props to John Byrne for trying to do his own thing. It just uh, felt a little too much of a rehash of stuff that I'd seen elsewhere. I don't know. I guess I'm getting quiet because I'm having sort of fun um, drawing right now, but uh, sorry, I'm sure you guys have uh, conversations and questions going on in there. Oh, we've got a chibi. Chibi, how about a cameo? Here she is. Here's my little one. Hi. You doing good? You getting hungry? What time is it? It's almost time to eat. You want some food? We'll give you some food in a minute. It smells a little. Hi, pretty. Um, give me a moment. Like, um, I'm gonna go uh, give her some food. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Talk amongst yourselves. Good girl. 
she's happy now. Thanks. I'm a fan of Burn, but the only story I'm hoping he finishes is the last Galactus story. Oh, uh, I didn't read that one. Don't you dare trash this joint. I put a lot of hard work into this place. Let's see what we've got for colors. I'm looking for, like, more dynamic ones, but... I guess I'll deal with what I've got. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. That's pretty good. That's bright. I need like an orangey. Guess that'll have to do. Boy, I feel like I used to have a lot more Copics. I don't know where they all went. Darn it. Hmm. I really hoping I had like sort of a purple or something because. That really says to me sort of neon, but uh, I really wanted like orange and, and, and purple. I feel like this isn't going to look right if I, if I don't have those. Uh, maybe I'll just keep inking then, find some colors later. If I ever break into comics, I'd be okay with making comic tropes episode on me and my work. <laughs> Sure, it's uh, free publicity. I think most people would like that. Um, I don't know how to answer to the comments. Just whatever you want to say. Yeah, I wanted to like sort of do some like light like yellows in the middle but like signs like this I wanted to have like orange I wanted to have blue over here I wanted to have like some sort of purple down the middle and I thought that I had colors like that and I'm realizing that I don't so maybe I'll just sort of finish inking this and then come back to this at some point and uh, try to give it some life I feel like some really vibrant colors would definitely make this look a lot more interesting In, in my mind it was going to be all about the color and I was just sort of doing this just to get there Draw an army of zombies. Well, it's too late now. I mean, I could have if I started earlier, but it's a little too late to do to throw that in now. Hmm. Just pretend these guys are zombies and they're just not too interested in bothering anyone. What nice little zombies. They definitely have good manners. That's what my next comic's going to be about. Good mannered zombies. Draw a silhouette of Candyman. <laughs> That's a pretty cool idea, but uh, I think I'm going to keep this one pretty realistic for the most part. But I like your idea.
Japanese zombies constantly saying sumimasen means excuse me it's going well thanks for jumping in had a lot of really kind people jumping in today sorry I've talked about some serious and depressing topics it was just uh, what's on my mind and when I do these live streams I figure it's all bonus content so I can talk about whatever it is that uh, interests me in the moment uh, not trying to depress anyone or bum them out. Just, uh, just trying to do my thing. I was kind of worried about Absolute Carnage, but with this Venom run has premise i only get more and more excited for the story well that's cool i'm going to talk about my friends and call it bonus content <laughs> talk to my friends and call it bonus content that's that's what it is bonus content uh it's your life we're just watching it <laughs> So New Orleans is one of my favorite cities. Uh, what's a city that you're not from, or a place that you're not from, that you love, that you fell in love with, and why? Because, like, I fell in love with New Orleans for the food and for just, like, its weird old-fashioned architecture and stuff. Old-fashioned. I mean, it's French. It's, it's beautiful. And, uh, yeah, so, like, but, like, give me an example of a place that you've either visited or stayed and, uh, fallen in love with Austin Austin Texas it's a pretty artsy uh, community I can respect that I like Austin got a few friends that live there Heidelberg, Germany, sure. Coruscant, yeah. <laughs> uh, Salzburg, okay, okay. The beaches of Pensacola, I've been there, yeah. Capri, fancy. New Orleans is the best part of Louisiana. I'm from Louisiana and only been there twice. Well, keep going, Pineapple. Manchester, because of the musical culture and the passion they have for football and art. So Manchester, uh, United Kingdom, you're talking about. Because there is a Manchester... Uh, um, New Hampshire? Yeah. That water filter or whatever is one of my favorite parts of these streams. It's so relaxing. I'm always surprised you guys can hear that because I just tune it out. I, I don't feel like it's that long, uh, loud. Not out long. I'm always surprised you guys can actually hear that. But it is pretty chill and like relaxing so I agree New Hampshire I lived in Manchester Maryland it was Houston for the Wren Festival uh, is Hella Club uh, sure there's a campsite that had a creek where we'd catch frogs and salamanders when we were kids. That is nice. Hell is what Rambo calls home. Well, Rambo isn't the best person in the world. Jeez, I just remembered that he had a fifth movie that came out. I definitely did not see that one. That did not look good. And I liked the other Rambo movies in general. I mean, 3 wasn't great, but I like Rambo. But boy, that Rambo 5 looked terrible. I don't know. I didn't see it. It did not look it did not look too good.
The sugarcane fields of southern Louisiana on a balmy day. Yeah, it's pretty down there. Cozumel. Cozumel, sure. Yeah, the world has a lot of lovely areas. Wish I just had time to do nothing but travel. Guess that's not the most productive dream, but I just think I'd be happy just traveling all the time and seeing new places. Rambo has rage control issues. Yeah, Salt Lake City has a beautiful skyline. There you go. Um, I would say those bubbles are white. Chris, would you be interested to see a Spider-Man movie that takes place during the 60s? Absolutely. Absolutely. Have him set back when he was uh, created. That, that, that would be totally interesting. Yeah. Hell, tell the uh, Spider-Man life story as a, as a movie or something. That would be pretty cool. Uh, that was a recent comic uh, by writer Chip Zdarsky with uh, Spider-Man artist um, Mark Bagley. And the premise was Spider-Man still is created in the 60s, but then he ages in real time. And each issue takes place during the next decade. Uh, and then uh, on top of that, it tells his most iconic story from that decade but like in new context uh, it's pretty cool it's, it worked really well I recommend it The Fantastic Four should be set in the 60s. Yeah, maybe. During one more day, Aunt May is well into her hundreds and he gives up MJ for her. Yeah. Best not to think about that story. Best not to think about it. Not a good one. Gonna get some uh, dinner pretty soon. I'm I'm getting hungry myself, folks. I've uh, haven't eaten yet. I don't know. Maybe some of you have. Just thinking of uh, possibly going out tonight and getting some Mexican. That's what I'm in the mood for. We cook uh, at home a fair amount, but sometimes it's nice to. Have a treat and go out. Anybody a fan of Steve Gerber Man Thing? I am. It's really cool. Where did they find the writers for Marvel Comics these days? Probably the same places they've always found, uh, you know, other comics, uh, up-and-coming artists and writers and uh, people that work in writing books. So, yeah. 
probably the same stuff that they've always done. The chicken sandwich is dangerous. Somebody got murdered fighting over the chicken sandwich. It's a risk I'm willing to take. I think I'm going to go get a chicken sandwich, folks. I think it's what I need. Uh, the SNL this past week had a pretty funny thing of an intern mm -hmm. like in the city like saying that he was going to go get chicken sandwiches for everyone at Popeye's, not understanding how popular they were and how dangerous it was. I was Honestly, it made me laugh quite a bit. I thought that overall, like, I don't know who Harry Styles is. I mean, I know he was in some sort of British boy band. He was the host and musical guest. Dude was pretty funny. I thought that this was, like, a really good SNL this past week. I don't say that lightly. I was really surprised. I was laughing at lots of it. I guess that's why I still watch it is because there are weeks where like you know the writers have had time to recharge their batteries and they come in and there's some pretty funny stuff at least in my opinion but yeah the, that Harry Styles guy was actually really funny I laugh too cool Popeye's chicken is delicious yeah, I haven't had the sandwich yet, but I do like um, I do like uh, Popeyes. Somebody should do a comic about the chicken sandwich. Yeah, do I recommend Twentieth Century Boys? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it's a big undertaking to read the whole thing, but the payoff is you're gonna really connect and care about those characters by the end like you're going to be with them for a long time and uh it's it's an amazing epic story yeah i've never been disappointed with anything naoki urasawa does um it's not like it's all my favorite but i've never been disappointed um just an amazing amazing creator Yeah. Anyway, it's really good. If you ever want to like do a good erasing job without worrying about smudging stuff, these rubber erasers, man. I do not eat fast food anymore, but if I did, it would be Bojangles. Uh, if I had one of those, I, I would eat it. Favorite Nintendo Switch games? Um, I'm trying to remember what I've even played on it. Um, I play so infrequently. Uh, I guess I don't necessarily have a favorite if, if I can't think of one off the top of my head. Um, I played the Mario game, the Zelda game. I didn't beat the Zelda game. I need to. 
I don't know when I ever will. One of the fun things about um, New Orleans is they have drive-through daiquiri stands. Oh man, I could so go for a daiquiri tonight. Oh, maybe if I go out for uh, Mexican, like I was thinking a minute ago, I could get a daiquiri. That could be fun. Favorite Golden Age artist? Oh, hmm. Golden Age, huh? Well, Will Eisner was illustrating during the Golden Age, so I would say Will Eisner. I think that they, for a trade paperback for Man Thing, I think that they have the those um, uh, what do you call it um, hmm, essential. I think that there's an essential volume for Man Thing. Kirby. Yeah. Um, Kirby was working during that uh, era, but he definitely got better um, in the Silver Age, in my opinion. Because the best time to drink is while driving. I know, it's weird. Eisner, Lou Fine, Mac, Raboy, CC Beck. Those are all fantastic choices. Those are all really great artists. Favorite Jack Nicholson movie? Um, Chinatown. Yeah. I like crime stories. I agree, James. It's a, it's a great script. Just really, really tight and efficient. Uh, nothing really wasted there. I'm a sucker for a, a good fundamentals and good foundation, good structure. So, yeah, I really admire um, the structure of Chinatown. Good movie. I would say that it falls into uh, film noir and maybe is like as far as I, I can think off the top of my head like the last real film noir m movie made. But um, I'd be willing to hear a debate on that. You know what happens to nosy people? They lose their noses. 
This is my favorite drawing I've seen Chris do so far. Wow, that's exciting to hear, because it's definitely not like, you know, my typical stuff, but uh, thanks. I think I'm just sort of taking my time, having fun. Um, appreciate the compliment, though. Is anybody here following Doomsday Clock? I'll read it when it's done. I'm not going to support, like, the sort of uh, monthly. <laughs> I know it's not coming out monthly, but it supposedly was going to be. I'm not going to support it on a monthly basis um, as a subscription because I don't think it was right for DC to sort of take control of that property when Alan Moore intended to have it revert to him. So I don't want to support it on that level, but I will read it after it's all come out um, and like whatever sort of copies are left over at the comic book store. Once the whole thing is finished, I'll, um, I'll get it and read it at that point because then I'm supporting my comic book store and I can talk with all of you and like give an honest review. But um, I don't want to I don't want to buy it while it's coming out and support it monetarily. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, Doomsday Clock will finally publish all the issues in a couple more years. Isn't there only one more to go? I, I haven't like been reading it, but I, I've been trying to follow it. I thought that there was only... Uh, I thought that there was only like one more... Uh, issue to go and that it was coming out this uh, December. I could be wrong, but I thought that that's what it was. If you could choose one comic book series issues 1 to 100 to read as your last form of comic book entertainment, what would it be? Hmm. Savage Dragon. I know there'll be consistency there. I like Eric Larson a lot. I don't think he gets uh, the full credit he, he deserves as a creator. I think he's very, very consistent, very entertaining, very reliable. A lot of respect for uh, what's come before in the medium. And uh, I don't know. I just really like Eric Larson a lot. I met Eric Larson twice. Great guy. Yeah, I've met him a few times, too. He's nice. I don't know if he'd remember me, but I, I've met him and had some great conversations. Have I read Jonathan Hickman's Manhattan Projects? No, but I do like Jonathan Hickman, so I would be interested in reading that. I'd pick up young blood. That way I could live forever. There you go. Whatever happened to Peter David? He used to be such a hot writer for a decade. Seems to have hit a slump. I'm not sure what he's working on right now, but I mean, until recently, anyway, he was definitely still um, doing uh, 
plenty at like uh, Marvel. Uh, it doesn't seem like that long ago that he was still doing, um, you know, like uh, X Factor and stuff. But um, it's a good question. I guess I haven't read anything new by him in a little while. I think he was having some health issues too, though, to be fair. Um, so that could definitely be something that's interfering a bit. With wherever he's at creatively. Let's see. Peter David was suffering the consequences of his divorce, turned to Kickstarter, someplace to make ends meet. He'd also had a stroke. Yeah. Peter David's Hulk run from the 90s. Was there ever a better series to fall in love with for years on end? He did a lot of great stuff with it. I definitely agree with that. Um, he, he definitely uh, had a great run. Great, great run. He did a lot with the character. What other questions are there? It's getting quiet, isn't it? It's sleepy time down south. Our grandfather worked on the Manhattan Project. That's true. That's true. My grandfather, uh, was a uh, pretty brilliant physicist and worked on a number of interesting things, but uh, that was one he didn't really tell us too much, well, anything about. But yeah. Hard to really be proud of that one, I feel like. You know, it's, it's impressive that he was that smart, but uh, yeah. He also worked on UNIVAC, the first computer, nuclear physicist, yeah. He was a smart guy. Frank Miller is suing his wife? Where'd that come from? Wow, I didn't hear about that. Are you talking about Lynn Varley? He's suing Lynn Varley? Why would he sue, sue her so many years after they were married? That's why he didn't talk about it much. Yeah, I know. He's suing her for secretly trying to sell his art. Hmm. Now that's not good if that's true. That's too bad. That's so sad. They were together for ages and ages. And then, like, yeah. It seemed like Hollywood uh, made him lose interest. But, of course, we, we don't know for sure.
don't see um, I don't see Lynn Varley getting mentioned in in comics much anymore. I, I I don't know if she's still working on stuff or not. What do you think? Does this look kind of like reflective, like like a rainy street? That's my goal, is by just like kind of giving like a wavy texture to it all. I don't know if he had cancer. He never talked about it. He definitely did not look well for a long, long time. Um, I think he may have, and then he may have like got it in remission, but that's just looking at photos. I don't know anything for sure there. Hey Gene, I've always thought of like going to um, New Zealand at some point, like to, you know, just partly because, you know, Grandpa was from there and all. And, uh, I mean, would you ever be able to get time off? Like, we should do that together. That would be an amazing trip to take together. We also like um, things like, you know, uh, Lord of the Rings, and we could see some of those areas. Like, would you ever be able to get, like, a week or something? And, like, we could, like, I mean, Chrissy would probably come too, but would you want to do that? Like, we should do that. We should go to, like, uh, New Zealand, like, late next year or something. Love the wet street look. Thanks, thanks. Um, yeah, I feel like, like, these would all be, like, neon signs. So, like, that would be able, like, so much fun if I had really bright, vibrant Copics to sort of, like, do all the different reflections that's why I started to do some of these colors and I was gonna have them like like reflect down here but I can't find quite the colors that I want to work with uh, Gene I think that we should totally do you and I should do a brother sister trip to um, New Zealand I'd love to go and have a friend that lives there that was going to stay with, but I don't think I could go until Kaylee is gone. That's her dog. Her dog's pretty old and, uh, uh like deaf, so needs kind of special care. Well, I understand that, but let's, let's think about it. Like that, I feel like that we could have a great trip together and, and, and like we, we haven't gotten to see each other much in a while. So I think that that would be really, uh, fantastic to do together. Just trying to add some texture. I'm probably going to take a break shortly. Well, the break. I think I'm going to call it a a night pretty soon because uh, I do need to eat and uh, I've been thinking of taking a break for a while. Obviously, I need to sort of ink this whole side, but if I block that out, like I feel like a lot of that's starting to look uh, pretty good.
Drawing is easy to pick up. You should try tracing things first in order to learn. Let's see. I feel like you need to go at least two weeks and I can't leave her for this long. Too much work for... Yeah, maybe. Do you have any of the fluorescent Copics? I don't. I thought I did and then I just looked and I, and I definitely don't. So, yeah, I can't really um, quite finish this to where I wanted it to be um, without that. New Orleans is a funny place, man. It's, it's unlike anywhere else. It's uh, it's got its own vibe. I I, I love it. Um, it's not perfect, but it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty pretty cool. Can I go along? <laughs> Let's say now do a glowing playing card smashing through a window charged up with explosive energy. Well, I mean, I guess I haven't inked this, so yeah, I could have like a gambit over here, like crashing through a window if I really felt like it. You know, just... You know what? That could be kind of cool. Maybe I'll come back and I'll like just draw like gambit fighting on this side <laughs> um yeah maybe i'll come back to this i think that that's where i'll leave it for now but I'd, uh that, that's a, that's kind of a fun idea to uh think of like throwing in a new orleansy character like gambit and, and just yeah there, there actually is room to to just totally do that all right I'll give some thought to that. Maybe I'm um, so keep an keep keep an eye out. Maybe someday I'll come back to this guy and uh, and repeat it. Uh, re repeat it. Finish it. It's been almost three hours. That's a pretty good live stream. Thank you all for uh, joining. For thank you for the questions. And uh, I'm gonna take off now. Time to time to eat. And um, until I see you next time, which will be very soon. Keep reading comics. Bye all. Take care. <laughs>